Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So our first video today was over on Heart's Home, and you know, we, we had one family member who's been with us a long time, and we mentioned Heart's Home, and he said, what? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, Heart's Home. This is where you go if you can't take the information that we're going to be sharing with you uh, now, basically the news. And you just want the spiritual side of things with no news added, then head over to Art's Home. So this one today felt really good. The ultimate truth that dissolves all darkness, you know, because that's the bigger scheme in things. This is absolutely a learning experience here on planet Earth. And it's so, so common when you're going through a spiritual journey to move away from the news, move away from that frequency. And we want people to be able to grow. So we did create Hearts Home. It's it's very different. It's a safe place to be. It digs into spirituality. And I love that people can grow. They can kind of move away from the yuckiness. But right now, we're still called to cover the yuckiness too. So here we are. Absolutely. So if you just want basically the light with none of the duality and polarity, head over to Heart's Home. Uh, again, thank you guys for your support over on Patreon. We couldn't do it without you guys over there as well. Everything does go up on Patreon. And we are also on Rumble and Brightian and BitChute and Ko-Fi. So we, we do a lot of posting everywhere. And what you are watching is a plane crash on I-75 in Naples, Florida. Wow, it, this, wow, you know, the scene, it's its really tragic. We send our prayers to those involved. This is just a developing thing right now at this moment as we're doing this video, as you can see. Um, pretty, pretty scary scene here. Uh, going through what we have, a business jet just crashed on I-75 in Naples, Florida, approximately 35 minutes from where... Brian is located. Uh, a Bombardier Challenger 604 jet, normally configured with 10 to 12 passengers. The flight was headed towards Naples Airport when they radio in that they lost control of both engines. No reports on injuries as we, uh, obviously it does feel that there were probably a loss of life in this. Um, Cindy does pick up that she feels that there was somebody on board that might have had some information uh, regarding some things that maybe others didn't want getting out. There are all sorts of technologies in play that would boggle the mind. This plane crashed right on I-75. Wow, you know, fatalities confirmed, and we will give you guys updates on this as we go. Lots of things going on. And, you know, one of the things I'm noticing, I don't know if you guys notice, I have a massive Twitter feed, by the way. Um, so I, I do get lots of stuff from different places. But I, I seem lately to not be getting the stuff that counts the most. I see a ton of ads. I got to search. And I do search. I have a lot of the keywords I'm always looking for. But I actually went and did a Google search and, and found info on train derailments that weren't showing up that should be showing up in my feed. Gosh, you know, there's a lot of craziness going on, guys. A lot, a lot of craziness going on. And you might not know because I do totally feel that right now they are trying to suppress all the news getting out into the public because they don't think they want the public to get upset, excited, or, you know, panic at all the chaos that's really going on right now. So I'm going to roll through these. Here, this was, this was a train uh, derailment in a fuel spill in Loveland. There was a series of derailments. And, you know, I personally don't think things are coincidences. Uh, remember all those train derailments we had? Then it seemed like it got a little bit quieter. I don't know if it really got quieter or if that there's just so much other stuff going on that you it's it's it becomes not as big an event but this was a pretty good size fuel spill again colorado uh not just colorado and this is just yesterday and today uh in fact 
got to wonder, you know, again, what's what's really the big story here? You know, there's sleepy cellular units that are doing their thing. Uh, I understand there's the line of thinking, too, that the Earth is, is expanding and changing and contorting. As you see this massive coal spill. So think about coal. This is coal in Nebraska, by the way. The last one we were talking about. Uh, was a massive oil spill in in uh, Colorado fuel fuel. Uh, here we have another train derailment. This is in Clinton, Iowa, Iowa and Nebraska are right next to each other. N and this one uh, limited details at the mo moment. Luckily, it was minor. No cars tipped over, but the derailment did result in a spill that required hazmat. The train is back on the tracks. With these type of containers, it could have some sort of liquid. And if it caused a hazmat situation, I got to wonder, is it, is it carrying oil? Is it carrying some sort of fuel? Is it carrying something else? You know, these, these are the two locations here in Nebraska and the Iowa one. And again, these, these are within hours of each other. And here you have a busy scene at a derailment cleanup and this is in a river and and this is valley falls and this is up in new york state another freight train derailment hmm this is in a couple of days 10 of the trains 94 cars derailed about 9 53 p.m two going into the river uh there's plastic that they're trying to vacuum up Oil and propylene plastic are not hazardous. Don't worry, don't worry, they're not hazardous. But, you know, again, all these derailments, planes dropping from the sky, and then if it's not a derailment, in Switzerland here, you have an Iranian uh, asylum seeker, another term for illegal migrant, armed with a knife and an ax, kidnapping 15 people on a train. But special uh, forces took him out. It's crazy out there. You want to go crazier? Here we go. Now, this one is probably the spookiest yet. This is on a Lufthansa flight from Bangkok to Munich, Germany. And the husband, 63, dies next to his wife when liters of blood shoot out his nose and mouth all over the interior of the plane in front of screaming passengers. Okay. Yes, that tops the others. That that was like really rough when when I read that one. Um, I mean, just going there and seeing the horror in everyone else's souls, and of course the the fear of the man who was dying, and he had you know he he knew it. He was somewhat kind of there, and then the wife, and oh my gosh, there is so much trauma like on that plane, and then. The other scary part is these are visions that I've had and other people who who can see visions and many of you have seen this thing where there is blood coming out of the orifices and you know at some point it, it's going to be time to stay home and I can't say that that's now this time but at some point this could go. Yeah, and this goes back to the first plague upon the land. Like when the first plague upon the land came out four years ago, this is when Cindy got the visions that there's going to be multiple things, but there is one thing where you really don't want contact. You want as limited contact with others as possible, and you just kind of want to write it out as best as you can in a more isolated state for real. Yeah, I mean, this is something that we're just watching. We're not saying it is, but I mean, if these start popping up all over the place, we're probably going to isolate. Yeah, and this is why, again, we've been stressing the fact that, um, you know, of course, it's been go time for a while now. But when things really take that next step beyond where they're at right now, you need to be where you need to be. And and the opportunity for uh, things to be semi-normal will disappear for a while. And it's just going to be about riding out the storm where you are at that time. Now, riding out the storm could look very different depending on where you're at. And, you know, if you are in one of the NATO nations, then as we shared, we feel that they have planned major, major, major military uh, activity in the NATO nations. 
Um, I don't want to scare anybody. Um, that's not the intention is scaring, but it's just that I feel that's part of my life's purpose because, you know, as as a teenager <laughs> in, in high school, I started to see these times. And there's a reason why I incarnated in this life. And I've always known that. I've looked at my left palm all my life. And, you know, I have one line that shows that there's going to be a major change and my life is going to be one way to a certain point and then it's going to shift. And, you know, then I have always had the knowing that that's kind of a reflection to the world that I am going to experience for this incarnation. The world's going to be kind of going along its normal way and then there's a shifting point and it never goes back to that. There will be a new norm that will develop but we're never going back to what was, you know, what was the way we grew up with is just going to be a thing of the past. And, you know, there are different paths we could take. We could take the technological AI integration into the Borg. Uh, we could take the natural path and try to live more in harmony with nature being self-sufficient. We can try, and there's going to be probably the majority is probably going to try to straddle both worlds. You might be able to straddle them for a while, but at some point in time, you're going to have to decide, do I pick up the left foot or the right foot, you know, and which one, which direction do I, I place it in? And that might not come for you or for somebody else till, you know, <laughs> the last moment. But as far as, uh, will there be something like this that sweeps uh, the land and the globe? W we've seen that this is uh, something that looks to be in timelines. So, um, yeah, I do think, unfortunately, there is something that's going to be out there that people will really want to shelter in place for. And if you look to some of the prophecies by some of those people that we bring up all the time and others think of when you think of prophecies, it does seem that WW3 coincides with some sort of very, very nasty, real uh, plague upon the land. And, you know, again, we are very close uh, to open acknowledgement of that WW3. If you look to this, People are wondering what's up with Wolf here. And if you watch his face and everything, is it just that he, he doesn't like number 45? It looks like he's holding back vomiting. It looks like he's getting sick, doesn't it? Hard, yeah. yeah, I mean, it looks like he's going to yak in person. Now, there's a lot of people that go, went ahead and did something that the rest of us didn't do. And you guys know what we mean there. So that's obviously affecting many, many people. And there could be other things as well involved. Uh, obviously, these are times where we want to build the immune system, get as strong as we can, uh, have a good mind, body, breath practice, because, you know, the world is hitting its breaking point. This is Spain, and this is a farmer's, you know, PRO test going on. And as you can see, people are hitting the breaking points and the farmers are deciding to move the police out of the way. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's gentle compared to what, what seems to be on its way. And I think you will see more and more people uh, leaving the established power structure and joining those on the other side. This is this is definitely something that's really really big. And then I mean, just looking at uh, what's his name there, Wolf Blitzer. I don't think that that was anything that he was doing to make light or make fun. It looked like he was serious. And also looking at his energy, it's very very gray. He does not look well. Okay. So again, this is you know when you can read energies, and and uh, there was one comment on I think it was on evolutionary where somebody was like, "Stop pretending you could read energies." Do you know how many people could read energies? Tons of people mm -hmm. see auras, tons of people, and that's increasing every single day. And in reality, if it, if it wasn't for the Florida of water and all the things they have in play, at this point in time, the vast majority of people would would, would be able to see 
other people's energy fields and know right away that they were, you know, lying, fibbing, you know, who to trust, who not to trust. Right. Well, I mean, some people just, they don't realize that there's something else outside of you. And for them, just the very thought or the idea, they think it's just completely insane, you know, but the it's, we all have access to this energy if we want to develop it. Absolutely. And here we see we had an X class, and this was an X 3.3 flare. Now, again, they say that this is directed um, away from us, mostly away from us. This was the second strongest flare of the current solar cycle, an X.3 event, 3.3 event, observed around AR 3575 at 1314 UTC. A large CME should be expected. But because it's now located be behind the southwest limb, it should be directed away from Earth. Um, the reality is it will affect us. It, it will affect people that are sensitive more than those that are not. Again, depending on where you are at in the ascension process, you might feel amazing or you might feel absolutely exhausted and wiped out. Mm -hmm. It definitely does something to the energy body one way or the other. Yeah, and that really depends on, you know, how much you still have left to purge. So really, if you're just starting to awaken and you're trying to clear out the negative energies, it could be a little bit worse. But it's a good thing. It is a good thing because the sun is what is bringing in these changes. And this is why they want you to lather on sunscreen. This is the primary reason why those fake clouds are in the sky. This is the reason why we see fluoridated water. It's all about suppressing human evolution and human consciousness. Because we are much more than what Homo sapiens sapiens has thought Homo sapiens sapiens is as far as the masses are concerned. Indeed. So we do have an S2 uh, solar radiation storm event. And of course, when we think of radiation, uh, it could bring up scary connotations. And yes, if we are talking about our, our current allopathic form of medicine, uh, yeah, uh, we don't, I don't think we even have to say anything about that. But when we talk about the natural progression of things, you know, in the bigger scheme of things, the creator of the universe has something in plan. And that is the end of a dark age, which is a good thing. And so when we're looking at... Um, Quakes. I wanted to bring this one up. This is in Pahala, Hawaii, a 5.7. So that's fairly significant. Um, as we can see, if we clear this out, you got 51 quakes in Hawaii at the moment. Oh, we've seen days where it was a thousand quakes in Hawaii. I'm, I'm watching closely Cascadia and San Andreas because I feel that we are getting very close to major activity there and have felt so for over like the last year plus. Um, and we have three quakes down here off of Baja, California, 4.4, 4.7, 4.7. You know, there's, there really is a lot of energy building up along Cascadia and the San Andreas. And I do expect that, you know, again, it won't be too long. Unfortunately, Cindy did have a vision of them rolling out and also uh, the new Madrid going at the same time. And just to share your vision with people in this video, because it might have been a while since we did that, um, you saw interesting that no planes were in the air, but people were uh, being bussed around because it was such a big event, it, it kind of shut down the U.S., it did. It shut so many things down, and I thought it was curious in the vision. I didn't see any planes because you would think that if people needed to get home, that's how they would get home. But in my vision, the shaking was so huge. It's like we knew that all of these things had gone at once. I mean, there was no asking about it. You didn't need a news flash. It was it was really huge, and we're just standing there and feeling it shake and shake, and we're like, oh, my gosh, we know what this is. And it got really confusing because people needed to get home. They were not using planes. They were not using trains, but they were using buses. But even then, uh, not everyone knew about the routes to get home. So people were working together in small groups, you know, to get people from town to town to help get them home. 
um, so they can be with their loved ones or just get home to be home because that's what they want to do. But it, it took a long time. And, you know, it, it's like kind of felt like I would say spring, summer, because like in the vision, I do see people kind of hot as summer nights, you know, standing together after the event and working together trying to figure out ways to get home like which bus which car but people did have to come together in that sense um and work together so i mean with with everything there's always a silver lining and i guess that was it with that one absolutely and meanwhile we have the uh, ever increasing war going on and here we see houthis upping explosive drone boat swarms latest u.s navy intercepts shows you know this has been ongoing there's strikes you know in multiple countries right now you know the u.s is you know if you put the u.s and israel together then you know you have strikes obviously uh going into yemen going into iraq going into syria going into lebanon it's it's just a mess and then you have ukraine and russia and then you know it's obvious how this is going germany's sending another warship to the red sea the hessen left her home port in germany today is scheduled to arrive by the end of february yeah you know it's 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 just going down this this path and again the awakening needs to hit those that have their fingers on the triggers because again humanity suffers what do these wars ever really accomplish they just keep the control structure the way it is they make a lot of profits for the military industrial complex they cause untold misery and suffering which some entities literally are being fed off of that misery and suffering and when humanity just simply wants to do and be free and you know free and make your own choices decide what you want to eat and what you want to cook and just you know how you want to live your life we are the only animal uh, only <laughs> entity on the planet that pays taxes you know that pays for water i mean when you think about paying for water isn't that kind of insanity and yet you know well you can't trust water from uh, directly out of the uh, faucet, that's for sure. But that's a byproduct of of the system because the system is all about creating as toxic an environment as possible because they can make money off of it. Absolutely. More chronically ill people equals more profits, more control. In fact, the system would love it if everybody was so chronically ill that you were literally depending on the system for your daily weekly meds. Oh, that's a giveaway there. Yes, definitely. And it's so important to be a benefit to Mother Earth. She loves her children. She loves all of her children. But we have kind of been distorted in the sense that if there were no feathered birds on the planet, the planet wouldn't do well if there was no insects the planet would not do well. If there were no four-legged creatures, the planet would not do well. But if you look at us as human beings, if she didn't have us, she could carry on. And that's just the sad truth. So the best thing to do is be a helping entity, add to this planet so that we can become more whole. We're all in this together. Yes. And, uh, you know, great words of wisdom from my beautiful, wonderful wife. And to add to that, we're supposed to be the caretakers. Right. That's really what we're supposed to be. If, if we have this intelligence and we have the tools that we have with our hands and our fingers and our mind, we should be the caretakers of the planet. Instead, the system has us being parasites upon the planet, have a, has us being cancers upon the planet. And that's not to sound all hippie-ish, but it is what it is. It's the reality. The system is toxic. Well, we need cheap gas and oil. That's only because the system hasn't shared with us the energies that truly are free and are just so vast that there's there's no there's no way you could control it. They it's meant to be free and we're meant to live in a system that's in harmony with nature and and as cindy said if we weren't here the planet would actually be in better shape but again it depends on who is really controlling the planet 
and humans aren't really controlling the planet and that's the part that most people not you guys because you know again you guys are with us all the time you get the bigger picture you recognize that there's non-human intelligences that are really running the show and yes they are primarily of a different density but they use uh the human politicians as as puppets and they carry out their own will for the betterment of themselves that will all change as the light is shedding, as the sun is sending us its DNA altering. And that's another key. That it's sending us positive DNA altering energy. What are they doing? They're trying to alter DNA in the negative light. Everything about this system is plagiaristic. There is no originality. Yeah, the AI computers can beat most of us in chess all day long but they can't create something wonderful and beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I really love that about seeing us as caretakers. We are caretakers and we're also co-creators. So um, that's something that we could all manifest together. So thank you guys for being part of this family. It's an honor and a blessing as we have so many beautiful souls here with us. May you all be blessed. Namaste. Namaste.